Hey, what's going on everybody? Gareth here with FCP Euro. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the N55 engine and some of the common mechanical problems that you might come across or you probably want to know uh, if you were planning on buying a car with an N55. This is a very reliable engine, considering for what it is. It does have its problems and things that you should be aware of. So let's get into it. The N55 engine replaced the N54, which was a twin turbo, direct injected, six cylinder engine. The N55 is basically an improvement over the N54 in a couple of key areas. Number one, crankcase ventilation to reduce carbon on the intake. And they also switched from two turbos to a uh, single twin scroll turbo. Let's start off talking about some of the common problems you're gonna come across with an N55. And with that, let's talk about some oil leaks because in BMW land here, we love our oil leaks on higher mileage engines. It's just a thing, it happens, and something you need to be aware of. Let's start at the top of the engine with the valve cover. So right here, we have an entire valve cover assembly. One thing to note, these valve covers do have an integrated crankcase ventilation valve, so it is part of the valve cover. There's no way to replace this separately. If this were to fail, you're replacing the entire thing. Another thing that's interesting about these is they actually have a vacuum reservoir built into the valve cover as well. That's for your N55s that have a mechanical wastegate actuator as opposed to electronic. Like any gasket, uh, we have a rubber gasket uh, sealing the outside of the valve cover as well as these gaskets that seal the spark plug, ignition coil, and direct injector wells. So these could leak and because the engine is slanted to the right side of the engine bay, that means gravity takes over and the oil starts leaking on the turbo heat shield and then you start smelling really nasty burning oil smells. Another area of concern is the oil pan gasket. This is another very common uh, leak that can develop over time. There's really nothing you could really do to prevent it. Um, essentially what happens is uh, you have a metal gasket with rubber that has been bonded to it. Uh, this rubber essentially becomes rock hard over time, doesn't seal anymore. And now potentially the most dangerous area for oil leaks on this engine is your oil filter housing gasket or oil cooler thermostat gasket. Uh, the issue here is due to the design of the harmonic balancer and crank pulley, what will happen is if the oil leak is severe enough, oil will leak down the timing cover physically get onto the serpentine belt. The serpentine belt will then slip off the crankshaft pulley, which is inboard of the harmonic balancer. It'll be forced up against the engine block. The crankshaft pulley will then literally grind up the serpentine belt, force it through the front timing cover past the front main seal. And now you have little shards of serpentine belt inside your engine. In order to install the crankshaft seal, you're gonna need a special tool kit just to physically remove what's left of the seal and put it in. If you don't do that and simply just replace the front main seal, not expecting that the serpentine belt has been consumed by the engine, uh, you're gonna end up needing these, which are your rod bearings. The rod bearings are the things that really rely on engine oil. And if all those shards of serpentine belt are covering up the oil pump suction tube, you're gonna have really poor lubrication to your engine. And uh, if you catch it in time, you can go ahead and replace those and hopefully escape any major damage. If you don't uh, catch that problem and these things run dry, eventually your engine block is going to have a nice window on the side of it and now you're just buying a whole new long block. You don't want to do that. So another thing to know about the N55 is there's a distinct early version which is only made for a handful of production months and a later version which carried all the way to the end of the production. Uh, the early version uses this high pressure fuel pump which is physically driven off of the back of the vacuum pump this particular design. This comes over from the N54. Uh, it is a potential problem point for you. Um, not only are these very expensive, but they do have somewhat of a common failure issue in which an internal O-ring inside of here fails, causing fuel to mix with the pump side and oil from the pump side mixing with the fuel side. And essentially you now have zero fuel pressure going to the fuel rail. And on a direct injected engine, uh, that doesn't really work too well. 
unfortunately, uh, they did switch over to this more common style tap it version, still driven off the vacuum pump on the N55, um, but it runs off of this little follower. And generally this design is a lot more reliable, a lot more robust. Also, this is significantly cheaper than this version. One thing to mention on this particular style of high pressure uh, fuel pump, because this is just strictly a tap it. Um, what can happen is the seal internally here could fail and fuel can actually leak out this way and it could end up in the engine. So just something to be aware of with these because the pressure chamber and the pump, this is only just a pump. Um, the failure on these is for fuel to leak out of it. That's a very rare failure, but it's been known to happen. Another optimization that BMW made on the N55 engine over the N54 is they went back to solenoid style uh, direct injectors. Uh, these are much cheaper than the piezo style injectors that would be found in the N54. And they're also a lot more reliable. Um, while we do sell these to a degree, we don't sell nearly uh, the same volume of these as we would with the uh, N54 high pressure uh, fuel injectors. So on the N55 engine, it uses a third generation Valvetronic system. Uh, Valvetronic is the variable valve lift system that BMW uses for the intake uh, side of the engine. However, one interesting on the N55 is to lubricate the worm drive uh, on the Valvetronic side, there's this little oil squirter on top of the cylinder head. Uh, it's a very small passageway, but what some people found is this little, little squirter here can actually get filled with carbon um, or some oil sludge, and then it won't actually lubricate the worm drive for the Valvetronic eccentric shaft, and then it causes unnecessary wear to both the gear on the Valvetronic shaft as well as the motor itself. So you would look at this normally and not think anything of it, but this is actually a pretty critical component and uh, one way to make sure that you don't run into this problem is change your oil more frequently. BMW recommends 10,000 mile intervals. We're really more on that 5,000 mile side, maybe 7,500 if you do a lot of highway driving, but if you're mixed driving, do 5,000. And uh, make sure you use a high quality oil and you can cut down chances of this getting clogged up. So next time you have your valve cover off and you see this, uh, pop it off, make sure that fluid can actually travel through it. If it can't, you might be able to clean it up, but quite frankly, it's just easier to get a new one. Another kind of unusual problem on the N55 engine, and there really is no mechanical or direct mechanical linkage between the timing components and any of the rotating assemblies. So the camshafts and the crankshaft and then like the crank gear and the cam gears, there's no like Woodruff key or anything that holds these components together. It's the actual fasteners basically compressing the two together is what creates the bond. And unfortunately, what um, has been known to happen from time to time on the crankshaft side of things is you have a crankshaft hub and then you have your timing sprocket that sits between the hub and the, and the crankshaft and you have this big bolt right here that gets torqued to a pretty high specification that's basically squeezing the entire thing together. Well, what's been known to happen on some N55s is this bolt can come loose over time. Uh, there's actually products on the market, such as one from Vargas Turbo, uh, that actually will physically lock the head of this bolt in place so it can't spin out. Uh, they call it a crank bolt capture, and it's an easy bolt-on solution that can help ensure that this physically cannot back itself out. Another thing to note is uh, uh, engine mounts on the N55. These are actually pretty much the same on a lot of newer BMWs. These are all liquid filled. They're very soft. They're really nice at preventing unwanted engine harmonics from getting into the passenger compartment. But the only issue with these is uh, they do fail. And when that happens, you will know. You're gonna be feeling a lot of things through the drivetrain that you normally wouldn't feel. First place to look at is these. What we've actually seen on some of these mounts is this connection right here where the stud is, it will literally just rip right out and it's no longer directly connected. Um, even with the aluminum housing on it, these mounts are relatively fragile and it's especially critical on vehicles equipped with start-stop technology. Um, they usually have their own specific mounts to deal with the constant engine starting and turning off. Um, they do take a beating, so this is an area to really watch out for. Now there are upgrade options such as like this one from RevShift, which is solid and can't fail in that way. However, you do give up some of the comfort that the car would normally have. So if you're not looking to improve the performance of the vehicle or you're not running more power, or you're not really concerned about that kind of stuff, stick with these. If you are upgrading the car, 
or you want something that feels a little more solid, there are options on the market to help improve the feel of the car overall. Another common area to deal with on the N55 engine, uh, pretty much your serpentine belt drive system. We talked about how it's possible for the serpentine belt to slip off and be consumed by the engine. Uh, but this actually is more pertaining to the wear of these components and a lot of the noise that you'll sometimes hear. Uh, these tensioners, when they wear out, because it's simply a spring-loaded tensioner, uh, you'll see a lot of wobble of the tensioner while at idle. Usually a good indicator that the tensioner is worn out and it needs to be replaced. Uh, also, these either pulleys will sometimes make noise uh, when they start to age because the bearings inside are starting to run dry. Uh, usually, the serpentine belts are good for about 80,000 miles but the belt and the pulleys actually wear together. So when you go to replace the serpentine belt, it's really best to replace the pulleys, the tensioner, and the belt together so that when you put everything back together, all the parts are new and they have the opportunity to wear together again. It is possible sometimes to put a brand new belt on old pulleys. Just avoid all that, replace the components together, save yourself time and aggravation later on. And this wouldn't be a BMW powertrain video if we weren't talking about cooling systems and the failures that come along with them. A lot of modern systems use plastic, and it's not the plastic that's the problem, it's the electronics. So one major difference on the water pump side of things is this is not mechanically driven. It's an electrically driven water pump. It actually uses a signal from the ECU or the DME, as BMW calls it, uh, along a CAN bus line that is interpreted by a control module inside this water pump. Now, most times you would think that it's the motor that fails. The common failure on these is the control module inside. Uh, the control module basically fails, and therefore simply doesn't work. Um, there's fault codes that could be associated with a failing water pump. We actually did a video on a 335 with an N54. It's gonna be exactly the same for that. So put a link down there just as a reference because we did a diagnosis on that as well. Uh, but another thing to keep in mind too is because this water pump is using a bit serial data or a drivetrain bit serial data network, you do have to worry about issues with CAN communication any one part on that CAN bus that is not functioning correctly could cause other components not to communicate with each other very well. And what could be seen as a water pump not working could be something as simple as an oil level sensor that has failed. So some diagnosis is required to make sure that you're not just throwing parts at a problem. But generally speaking, you know, service life on these is 65 to 75,000 miles and you're gonna do the thermostat along at the same time. But as it is, it's a pretty reliable system and it does offer flexibility in terms of how the engine runs, the power, the economy, which is why BMW went this route. And if you're dealing with BMW cooling systems, while we recommend the genuine BMW antifreeze, as I affectionately refer to as the blue juice, you don't necessarily need to use genuine antifreeze. What you should be using is a BMW G48 compliant coolant. As long as it's G48 compliant, you can use it. Do not recommend putting any other antifreeze in a BMW cooling system that does not match with that. You run the risk of corrosion and other potential nasty things happening that you could totally avoid by simply using the correct operating fluids. Last but not least, this has actually started to become a very common question that we get in the customer service side of FCP Euro on a daily basis. The N54 used a spark plug that was one step too hot, so there was a lot of issues around the spark plug, especially with elevated power levels. But the N55 actually comes with a one step colder spark plug from the factory. We always get asked, you know, hey, do you have a one step colder spark plug for the N55? Honestly, I don't see the benefit in doing that. Um, your next option would be to use like an F80, F82, F83, M3, M4 spark plug, which is one step colder than what this is but there isn't really that much benefit in doing it. So really this one spark plug is gonna work for most applications. Uh, so really the spark plug provided by BMW in this configuration for the N55 is gonna be the best option for 95 plus 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 percent of people out there that own one of these cars. Really no need to mess around with this. And also another thing to note is these ignition coils. Uh, the Delphi ignition coil seems to be the happiest in the N55 engine. Uh, there's a Bosch and an Eldor option that BMW used from the factory. Uh, BMW's been doing a lot of switches lately with ignition coils and which ignition coil goes to what engine. Technically, all three versions of these style ignition coils 
which uh, I refer to as pencil style ignition coils. They could be interchanged between engines and they'll work perfectly fine. Uh, but the Delphi ignition coil seems to be the happiest in the N55 engine. That's what BMW recommends. That's what we recommend. Some people prefer to run the Bosch ones. Some people prefer to run the Eldor. But I think keeping it simple is usually the best option most of the time. So this coil plus this plug, 95 plus percent of the time, for 95% of the owners, you're gonna be perfectly fine. Also, for those of you interested, we've already done an N55 service video. We'll explain some of the details and some of the tools you're gonna to need to do it. You cannot use a traditional spark plug socket. All that's explained in the video. So, link in the description, little card floating around up here. Go ahead and click that if you're interested in watching that for some of those details. All right, so I know this seemed like a lot of stuff and maybe you got a little bit worried, uh, but I can tell you right now that you're never gonna be dealing with all of these problems together at the same time. These are just general overviews about the engine and some common problems that you may see. With that said, if the car is properly maintained, it's had good oil changes, has service records, or you've owned the car from the beginning, you know what that service history is, you should be fine most times. Just wanna keep out for the couple key areas, the things that we talked about here today, and quite frankly, there's no reason why you can't rack up 200 plus thousand miles on your M55 power BMW. Uh, it's a really solid engine, really good power, very smooth, and overall very, very reliable for a turbocharged direct injected engine. Hope you liked the video. If you have any questions or comments, go leave in the comment box below. Go and hit that like button. Also, hit subscribe. We've got plenty more videos coming on the way about the M55 and some basic maintenance. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Later.